Hey guys, this is Adam with TAT Express, and today we're going to go over a no-start issue on a DT-466 International. Uh, we got this truck towed into us from Midland, Texas. I'm going to go over a few things that we've already found on the truck. Um, so I hope you like the video. Make sure to subscribe to us if you're not subscribed to us yet, and turn on that notification bell so you know next time we release another video. Let's get right into this. Okay guys, so as I mentioned, it's a no start on a DT International. Uh, we went through a few things. Uh, when the truck first came in, we hooked the computer up. We had multiple injector faults. Uh, usually when we see multiple injector faults, uh, that's a suspicion of fuel supply issues. So what we end up doing is pulling out the fuel strainer and the actual fuel filter. And we found that the fuel strainer was very, very clogged. The fuel strainer is something that's overlooked very often. Uh, it's not something that's changed on a regular basis when you do a PM. Um, so that's something that really needs to be checked. Basically, all it is, it's a fuel strainer that's fitted onto the fuel uh, pump. Uh, this particular truck has an electrical fuel pump. This is the electrical fuel pump here, and it's held on by a few bolts. You pull it out, and there's a fuel strainer right under there, and that's the one that we found that was very clogged. Currently, we have uh, fuel lines going to a separate, uh, separate fuel tank uh, just to eliminate any of the uh, possible aeration coming from the, the fuel lines. Uh, also, the fuel did look a little bit suspicious, so this is another reason why we're running off of a secondary tank. Um, I'm going to go, I want to show you a few things on this filter housing so that you can get a better idea of what it is. Um, so let's move right into that next. Okay, before we move on to the next item, I wanted to point out here um, what we're actually dealing with when I talk about the fuel strainer. This one here, this fuel filter here is mostly the fuel filter that's uh, changed during the PM. Um, this filter here is the actual strainer for the fuel pump. Uh, let me go here to the strainer on the fuel pump. Here's the strainer that I'm talking about. Uh, it's right next to the actual uh, fuel filter that we usually re uh, replace during a PM. This filter here, the strainer here, is what really gets overlooked. When we pulled this strainer on this truck, this was completely clogged. Uh, we were getting fuel supply issues, um, so we were able to get rid of most of the fuel supply uh, issues. Um, so we're going to move over to the actual PC. I just wanted to highlight those two filters and uh, just kind of inform you guys not to, uh, not to overlook this filter here. It's a very important strainer. If it does get clogged up, uh, you're definitely going to have fuel supply issues. So. We're gonna move on to the diagnostic part of the computer. Uh, so let's move on to that next. Okay guys, so we have the computer hooked up to the truck. Uh, as I mentioned before, that's the first thing that we'll do is hook up to the truck. When this truck originally came in, it had tons of faults all over the place, different injectors that were faulting out, fuel supply issues. So what we like to do is kind of clear everything out, uh, start from scratch, try to start it, see what kind of faults we're getting. Uh, the first thing that we were getting was fuel supply uh, faults, and that's kind of why uh, we, we did what we did with uh, canceling out the, the fuel lines going to the fuel tank, and also uh, just, just doing, some more re doing some more digging, and found the fuel filters, uh, the fuel filter strainer clogged up, and uh, the other fuel filter was just fine, but the fuel strainer was very clogged up. Um, so I'm hooked back up now, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you a few things that we look for when we uh, run this test as well. So um, as I mentioned, when we hook the computer up, uh, let me see here, get the computer hooked up. All right, so as you can see here, I have two pending faults. I have a fuel delivery pressure below uh, minimum. This is, this is a new fault that just came up. Um, this fault here, it's an intermittent fault. It's been coming uh, in and out. Um, you know, this fault here uh, is basically telling us that we have a bad ECM. Now this, this possibly could be the reason why uh, that why we're not starting, but for, with this ECM costing the way the, as much as it costs, it's it's what we like to do is troubleshoot everything to make sure that we're not having any other issues. Uh, as you can see, we we're still getting a fuel delivery pressure below normal. Uh, what I'm going to show you here is what the readings look like when we when we run this. Um, so here I am. I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
let's try to start the engine and what we're going to look at is fuel delivery supply here and uh, it should be above 80 psi for it to start so we'll see what it does here Okay, so you can see there it, it struggled a little bit to get up above 80 psi. We're going to try it again, but you can see here it's it's holding it's holding above 80 psi. We're going to try it again. Okay, so as you can see, we we should be above a solid 80. It's kind of intermitting. It's not dropping below 80 too much, but there you go with the key off. It's dropping. Um, so it's still, it, it, we, we could still be having a problem with the fuel pump. Um, so another item I'd like to look at here is ICP. ICP is the, is the injector control pressure. This is what actually on this particular setup, it uses high pressure uh, oil uh, and it goes through a manifold that uh, actually pressurizes that manifold. And that manifold is what injects the, uh, or cause the, the injector to, to, to fire. So instead of like a rocker pushing down on the injector, you have uh, 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 oil pressure that uh, does that for you. So desired here, actual is here, here we go. We're gonna look at that. Okay, so desired is 870, and we're looking at over a thousand. Okay, so that's basically where we need to be at on there. Uh, it doesn't look like we're having ICP errors. We're gonna do it one more time just to verify. Okay, it is uh, intermitting just a little, um, but we are staying above the 800, pretty consistent. That should be enough to start the engine. Uh, but as you can hear, we're still not getting any kind of starting. So we're gonna move on to the next step, uh, which is still checking out this fuel delivery pressure. So I'm gonna show you what we got going and uh, let's move on to that next. Okay guys, so as I mentioned, we're still uh, trying to troubleshoot where, where the fuel supply issue is coming from. We've already replaced the strainer. We've already put fuel lines in a different tank to cancel out any, any aeration coming from the actual fuel tank. Uh, so the next thing we did is I got a gauge hooked up here. Now this is a manual gauge. This manual gauge is gonna show us pressure at real time. So what I'm gonna do is try to crank this. And remember, we're looking for over 80 PSI for it to crank. So let's try it out, here we go. So as you can see there, we're staying above 80 PSI. It is fluctuating just a little bit. Now the manual wants you to test this manually with a manual gauge to eliminate any false readings from your, from your sensors. It's very rare that you're gonna get a false reading. Most of the time, if a sensor goes bad or a connection is bad, you're just not gonna get a reading at all. It's gonna be an open circuit or, or a shorted out circuit. So as you can see, fuel supply is good. Uh, you know, I don't want to condemn this, this, uh, this uh, fuel pump just yet, you know. Uh, we're getting errors that we do have low fuel pressure, but the manual gauge is showing us that we are above 80 PSI. Um, you know, the next thing that we're going to end up doing with this is we're going to actually have to pull the oil manifold that's on top of the injectors and pull the injectors to check the O-ring. So that's the next thing we're going to do. And the reason why we're doing this is it's possible that we have uh, a broken O-ring or a torn O-ring that's causing us to lose this fuel pressure. And the reason why we like to dig in a little bit deeper just to verify that we're having this issue, because what we don't want to do is throw another pump on here and we have the same issues. Because if you have a torn injector, you throw the, a new pump on there, it's going to give you the same problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull injectors and, and actually and check the O-rings, upper and lower O-rings. So that's the next thing we're going to do. I'm going to have these injectors pulled and let's look at them. So we'll move right into that. Okay guys, so we've pulled the oil manifold off. As I mentioned, this manifold uh, sits on top of the injectors. Here is where it, it meets with the injectors. These are the adapters. Um, sometimes what you can have is high oil pressure faults. 
um, and cause it to have a no start as well. But as you, as you can see, we're not getting any ICP pressure faults, but we are getting uh, fuel pressure faults. Um, we got the injectors pulled here and I wanna show you what we found. Um, here is number three, and this is almost like them all. Uh, as you can see, you have some kind of, looked like somebody put some kind of oil, grease on these O-rings, I guess whenever they installed them maybe. Um, and it's like that on all the injectors. Um, you know, you can see this grease, it's just all grease. It looks like this grease might have been um, uh, put on during install. Um, so what I may, what we are suspecting is it's possibly that we're losing our seals on our O-rings. Um, I noticed when I did pull the, pull the injectors, I didn't get a lot of fuel out of this. Uh, and, and instead of, I got a lot of fuel out of number, number six, uh, more than all of them. So it's possible we're losing a pressure and the other injectors are not getting uh, the right amount of uh, fuel supply. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean these O-rings up. We're gonna remove all this grease that somebody installed on this. We're gonna restall the injectors, uh, reinstall the manifold and test again, okay? As I mentioned before, we like to really dig into the uh, engine to find what our problem is. Uh, you know, we, we had low pressure faults. Some places will just go ahead and replace the pump. Um, as you saw, we, we tested the pump manually. It's within specs. Uh, so it kind of give us a, a, an indication that the pump is still good. Um, this is what we found pulling the injectors, as you can see. And as I said, we're gonna clean this up. We're gonna put it back together and we're gonna retest and hopefully we can get a start. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is the ECM fault that was coming up before. That's an intermittent fault and I notice it more when we have low batteries. So it's possible that voltage could be an issue uh, uh, for that fault. So that's another reason why we're not condemning the ECM yet. Um, but if we can get everything cleaned up here, reinstall, and our fuel pressures is fine, we're not getting any kind of pressure faults, uh, but we're still getting ECM faults, then we would move in on with swapping the ECM. Um, so we're going to be moving on to that next, and so um, stay tuned. Okay guys, so we're not gonna be able to reinstall these injectors today on this video. We will have a follow-up video that we'll link to this video. Uh, but one thing I wanted to mention is how important it is to troubleshoot the parts correctly before condemning it. There's a lot of shops that are just gonna hook the computer up and see a fault and change a part and the fault is still gonna be there. It's very important to understand how these, how these engines work and what we need to be looking for when we're actually troubleshooting them. So I hope you learned something in this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed to us. Turn on your notification bell so you know next time we release another video, guys. So until next time, be safe. I came from the mud, desert on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Shoot me down soon